Welcome back, everyone. I'm Carlos. This is Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. I'm here with Steven. Hey, everybody. How's in it going? Jersey City in his apartment. I really do dig this new set that we have. We always did it on, the, on that wall, but yeah. I'm liking this new set. What do you guys think? Like, Leave a comment down below. Tell us, do you like this or you prefer <laughs> the old one? I like this one. <laughs> so there. <laughs> Anywho, Chanel and Tayus, a powerhouse from the 80s. Classic. A classic scent. I bought a bottle, not in the 80s. I wasn't that much into fragrance yet. But later, in my later early adult years, I bought a bottle and I got rid of it. It was way too much. Okay. <laughs> right. It just was like, like, ill Chanel? Is this Chanel? Ill. I just did not like it at all. Yeah. Fast forward to now, 53 years old, and I was sent this bottle. I didn't buy it from a subscriber. I wore it. And thank you very much, by the way. You know who you are. I wore it and I was like, what was I thinking? Why did I get rid of this bottle? And I yeah. probably had a, a formulation from when it first came out. Okay. Or closer yeah, yeah. to than this. But this it has oak moss. Oak moss. And that's changed in all fragrances. And it has castorium. Hmm. Very um, Super animalistic. Yeah. So I tried it and I wore it to work, to work and I loved it. I wow. loved it. I just loved it. So wow. what's your history with Antaeus? Oh, wow. I own the fragrance too. And uh, I was in the Chanel boutique in Soho in mm. Manhattan. Cool. And I walked in there because I wanted to try the exclusive line. And I ended up purchasing uh, Sycamore. And I remember seeing this there and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a, and it was like under a hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm going to pick this up. I remember people talking about it online. I had no idea what it was going to smell like. And then I got home and I sprayed it and I'm like, this is some <laughs> masculine stuff. <laughs> like, like, dude. And I was like, do I wear this or, you know, it's funny because my wife, uh, she really likes polo, uh, the original in the green bottle because her dad wears it. Yeah. Her dad used, used to wear it, and uh, so it's very sentimental for her. So I remember when I bought this, I was like, well, maybe my wife will like it, but I never got around to wearing it. Just to uh, clear the air here, I uh, went into the other room and asked her if she liked it. She did not <laughs> like this okay. at all. No, like, I won't oh, wear it then. <laughs> she made the, you, know, you know the face, the, oh, like the dog? Smiling. Yeah, the cringe. Yeah, cringe face. So this is a really masculine-like hairy chested gold chain from back in the day disco like manly manly aviator fragrance. sunglasses maybe an afro <laughs> almost borderline <laughs> obnoxious pardon me chanel but but it works man it just works yeah if i if i may um and we know it's it is old i mean it's been out since 1981 but with a lot of uh these sort of vintage classic fragrances mm -hmm. Once they undergo reformulations, it's like they get a lot weaker and they're like, oh, it's a shadow of its former self. This is still strong. Uh, yeah. Yes, I totally agree. It may not be as aggressive of the bottle that I remember, but mm -hmm. it's still aggressive. Yeah. And it's not something that I would rock every single day. It's definitely not. Right. It's something that I would have to be in the mood for. And um, it's not a work fragrance to me. Um, it's more going out, special date, intimate night. And it has to be sprayed just right. You can't overdo it. This this would be like you would kill it if you overspray it. If you just spray it enough, it gives you that nice masculine demigod aura. Demigod, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly it's named after the Greek demigod. So the power of a god, the human nature of man. Uh, Nineteen eighty one, Jacques Polge, former in house perfumer. Um, I just think it's such a well-crafted scent. It is. Um, it's a classic. It definitely is in the classic file, for sure. Yeah, same, same. Um, listen, I love wearing a lot of Chanel scents. This is one that I don't reach for too often, if I may be honest. I it's one that I would love to smell on you, though, bro. I think. Yeah. Once Maybe I'm I'll try it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll try it. <laughs> but uh, I, I can't disagree with the fact that it is a well-blended scent. And for an animalistic scent, I think it's not that it's not that skanky. It's not that skanky, but it's not for you guys who enjoy freshies. You will hate this. <laughs> if you're a freshy type of guy, you're not gonna dig this at all. It's not gonna work for you. <clears throat> mm, the oak moss, it's herbal, it's woodsy, it's kind of animalistic. Not too much. Not too much, no, not overly so. It's not skanky. 
it's just very masculine and it's a particular fragrance for sure. Yeah, you have to be in the right mood, like you said. But definitely warrants being in the collection, I think. For sure, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, it's kind of in that same vein with like Polo and Drakkar. And, and you mentioned Horos before. Yeah. Horos. I was thinking of the name, mm -hmm. right? Oh, like the right, Greek right, statuesque. Right. I don't remember Koros. I remember the bottle, but I don't, I, I don't think I've ever smelled it, but... Yeah. That doesn't get as much high praise. This one, people actually like it. Right. <laughs> well, we respect it for what it is. It's definitely a classic fragrance. It's not for everyone by any means, but if you get a chance, definitely check it out if you can. So that's our thoughts on Chanel and Teus. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for joining me. Carlos, always my pleasure. And we'll see you at the next review. Take care, everyone.